Soyuz Russian, Suze IPA, S -Zhu, lit. Union is a series of spacecraft designed for the Soviet space program by the Korolyov Design Bureau now RKK Energia in the 1960s that remains in service today. The Soyuz succeeded the Voskhod spacecraft and was originally built as part of the Soviet manned lunar programs. The Soyuz spacecraft is launched on a Soyuz rocket, the most reliable launch vehicle in the world to date. The Soyuz rocket design is based on the Vostok launcher, which in turn was based on the 8K-74 or R-7A Semyorka, a Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile. All Soyuz spacecraft are launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. History The first Soyuz flight was unmanned and started on November 28, 1966. The first Soyuz mission with a crew, Soyuz 1, launched on 23 April 1967 but ended with a crash due to a parachute failure, killing cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov. The following flight was unmanned. Soyuz 3, launched on October 26, 1968, became the program's first successful manned mission. The only other flight to suffer a fatal accident, Soyuz 11, killed its crew of three when the cabin depressurized prematurely just before re-entry. These were the only humans to date to have died above the Kármán line. Despite these early incidents, Soyuz is widely considered the world's safest, most cost-effective human spaceflight vehicle, established by its unparalleled length of operational history. Soyuz spacecraft were used to carry cosmonauts to and from Salyut and later Mir Soviet space stations, and are now used for transport to and from the International Space Station ISS. At least one Soyuz spacecraft is docked to ISS at all times for use as an escape craft in the event of an emergency. The spacecraft is intended to be replaced by the six-person Federation spacecraft. Design. A Soyuz spacecraft consists of three parts from front to back a spheroid orbital module, which provides accommodation for the crew during their mission a small aerodynamic re-entry module, which returns the crew to Earth a cylindrical service module with solar panels attached, which contains the instruments and engines the orbital and service modules are single use and are destroyed upon re-entry in the atmosphere Though this might seem wasteful, it reduces the amount of heat shielding required for re-entry, saving mass compared to designs containing all of the living space and life support in a single capsule. This allows smaller rockets to launch the spacecraft or can be used to increase the habitable space available to the crew 6.2 cubic meters in Apollo CM versus 7.5 cubic meters in Soyuz in the mass budget. The orbital and re-entry portions are habitable living space, with the service module containing the fuel, main engines and instrumentation. Soyuz can carry up to three crew members and provide life support for about 30 person days. The life support system provides a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere at sea level partial pressures. The atmosphere is regenerated through potassium superoxide KO2 cylinders, which absorb most of the carbon dioxide CO2 and water produced by the crew and regenerates the oxygen, and lithium hydroxide LiOH cylinders which absorb leftover CO2. The vehicle is protected during launch by a payload fairing, which is jettisoned along with the SAS at two and a half minutes into launch. It has an automatic docking system. The ship can be operated automatically, or by a pilot independently of ground control. <laughs> Launch escape system The Vostok spacecraft utilized an ejector seat to bail out the cosmonaut in the event of a low-altitude launch failure, as well as during re-entry, however it would probably have been ineffective in the first 20 seconds after liftoff when the altitude would be too low for the parachute to deploy. Inspired by the Mercury Less, Soviet designers began work on a similar system in 1962. This included developing a complex sensing system to monitor various launch vehicle parameters and trigger an abort if a booster malfunction occurred. Based on data from R-7 launches over the years, engineers developed a list of the most likely failure modes for the vehicle and could narrow down abort conditions to premature separation of a strap on booster, low engine thrust, loss of combustion chamber pressure, or loss of booster guidance. 
The Spacecraft Abort System SAS, Russian, Systema Averinogo Spasenia Translate. Systema Averinogo Spasenia could also be manually activated from the ground, but unlike American spacecraft, there was no way for the cosmonauts to trigger it themselves. Since it turned out to be almost impossible to separate the entire payload shroud from the Soyuz service module cleanly, the decision was made to have the shroud split between the service module and descent module during an abort. Four folding stabilizers were added to improve aerodynamic stability during ascent. Two test runs of the SAS were carried out in 1966-67. The basic design of the SAS has remained almost unchanged in 50 years of use and all Soyuz launches carry it. The only modification was in 1972 when the aerodynamic fairing over the SAS motor nozzles was removed for weight-saving reasons as the redesigned Soyuz 7 KT spacecraft carried extra life support equipment. The unmanned Progress resupply ferry has a dummy escape tower and removes the stabilizer fins from the payload shroud. There have been three failed launches of a manned Soyuz vehicle, Soyuz 18-1 in 1975, Soyuz T-10-1 in 1983 and Soyuz MS-10 in October 2018. The 1975 failure was aborted after escape tower jettison. In 1983, Soyuz T-10-1 SAS successfully rescued the cosmonauts from an unpad fire and explosion of the launch vehicle. Most recently in 2018, the SAS sub-system in the payload shroud of Soyuz MS-10 successfully rescued the cosmonauts from a rocket failure 2 minutes and 45 seconds after liftoff after the escape tower had already been jettisoned. Orbital module. The forepart of the spacecraft is the orbital module Russian, Bytovoy Otsik translate, Bytovoy Otsik, also known as habitation section. It houses all the equipment that will not be needed for re-entry, such as experiments, cameras or cargo. The module also contains a toilet, docking avionics and communications gear. Internal volume is 6 cubic meters, 212 cu feet, living space 5 cubic meters, 177 cu feet. On the latest Soyuz versions since Soyuz TM, a small window was introduced, providing the crew with a forward view. A hatch between it and the descent module can be closed so as to isolate it to act as an airlock if needed, crew members exiting through its side port near the descent module. On the launch pad, the crew enter the spacecraft through this port. This separation also lets the orbital module be customized to the mission with less risk to the life-critical descent module. The convention of orientation in a micro-G environment differs from that of the descent module, as crew members stand or sit with their heads to the docking port. Also the rescue of the crew whilst on the launch pad or with the SAS system is complicated because of the orbital module. Separation of the orbital module is critical for a safe landing, without separation of the orbital module, it is not possible for the crew to survive landing in the descent module. This is because the orbital module would interfere with proper deployment of the descent module's parachutes, and the extra mass exceeds the capability of the main parachute and braking engines to provide a safe soft landing speed. In view of this, the orbital module was separated before the ignition of the return engine until the late 1980s. This guaranteed that the descent module and orbital module would be separated before the descent module was placed in a re-entry trajectory. However, after the problematic landing of Soyuz TM-5 in September 1988 this procedure was changed and the orbital module is now separated after the return maneuver. This change was made as the TM-5 crew could not deorbit for 24 hours after they jettisoned their orbital module, which contained their sanitation facilities and the docking collar needed to attach to Mir. The risk of not being able to separate the orbital module is effectively judged to be less than the risk of needing the facilities in it, following a failed deorbit. Descent module The descent module Russian, Spuskemi Operat Tr. Spuskemi Operat, also known as a re-entry capsule, is used for launch and the journey back to Earth. Half of the descent module is covered by a heat-resistant covering to protect it during re-entry, this half faces the Earth during re-entry. It is slowed initially by the atmosphere, then by a braking parachute, followed by the main parachute which slows the craft for landing. At one meter above the ground, solid fuel braking engines mounted behind the heat shield are fired to give a soft landing. 
One of the design requirements for the descent module was for it to have the highest possible volumetric efficiency internal volume divided by hull area. The best shape for this is a sphere—as the pioneering Vostok spacecraft's descent module used. But such a shape can provide no lift, which results in a purely ballistic re-entry. Ballistic re-entries are hard on the occupants due to high deceleration and cannot be steered beyond their initial deorbit burn. That is why it was decided to go with the headlight shape that the Soyuz uses, a hemispherical forward area joined by a barely angled 7 degrees conical section to a classic spherical section heat shield. This shape allows a small amount of lift to be generated due to the unequal weight distribution. The nickname was thought up at a time when nearly every headlight was circular. The small dimensions of the descent module led to it having only two man crews after the death of the Soyuz 11 crew. The later Soyuz T spacecraft solved this issue. Internal volume of Soyuz SA is 4 cubic meters, 141 cu feet. 2.5 cubic meters, 88 cu feet is usable for crew living space. Topic: <laughs> Service module. At the back of the vehicle is the service module, Russian: Priborno Aggregatnij Otsik TR. Priborno Aggregatnij Otsik it has a pressurized container shaped like a bulging can instrumentation compartment, that contains systems for temperature control, electric power supply, long-range radio communications, radio telemetry, and instruments for orientation and control. A non-pressurized part of the service module propulsion compartment, contains the main engine and a liquid-fueled propulsion system for maneuvering in orbit and initiating the descent back to Earth. The ship also has a system of low thrust engines for orientation, attached to the intermediate compartment. Outside the service module are the sensors for the orientation system and the solar array, which is oriented towards the Sun by rotating the ship. An incomplete separation between the service and re entry modules led to emergency situations during Soyuz 5, Soyuz TMA 10, and Soyuz TMA 11, which led to an incorrect re entry orientation. Crew ingress hatch first. The failure of several explosive bolts did not cut the connection between the service re entry modules on the latter two flights. Re entry procedure The Soyuz uses a method similar to the Apollo to deorbit itself. The spacecraft is turned engine forward and the main engine is fired for deorbiting on the far side of Earth ahead of its planned landing site. This requires the least propellant for re-entry. The spacecraft travels on an elliptical Hohmann transfer orbit to the entry interface point where atmospheric drag slows it enough to fall out of orbit. Early Soyuz spacecraft would then have the service and orbital modules detach simultaneously from the descent module. As they are connected by tubing and electrical cables to the descent module, this would aid in their separation and avoid having the descent module alter its orientation. Later Soyuz spacecraft detached the orbital module before firing the main engine, which saved propellant. Since the Soyuz TM-5 landing issue, the orbital module is once again detached only after the re-enter firing, which led to but did not cause emergency situations of Soyuz TMA-10 and TMA-11. The orbital module cannot remain in orbit as an addition to a space station, as the airlock hatch between the orbital and re-entry modules is a part of the re-entry module, and the orbital module therefore depressurizes after separation. Re-entry firing is usually done on the dawn side of the Earth, so that the spacecraft can be seen by recovery helicopters as it descends in the evening twilight, illuminated by the sun when it is above the shadow of the Earth. The Soyuz craft is designed to come down on land, usually somewhere in the deserts of Kazakhstan in Central Asia. This is in contrast to early U.S. manned missions which splashed down in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Spacecraft systems Thermal Control System, Sistema Obispecinia Teplavogo Resima, SOTR Life Support System, Complex SREDSTV Obispecinia Zizhendiatelnosti, KSOZH Power Supply System, Sistema Electropetania, SEP 
Communication and Tracking Systems, RASVET Don Radio Communications System, Onboard Measurement System SBI, KVAN-TV Spacecraft Control, Clias M Television System, Orbit Radio Tracking RKO. Onboard Complex Control System, Sistema Upravlenia Bortavum Complexum, SUBK Combined Propulsion System, Komplexnaya Divigatelnaya Ustanovka, KDU Cheka 3 Motion Control System SUD. Optical, Visual Devices OVP, VSK-4 Vizier Spetsialny Kosmichesky-4, Night Vision Device Vinuk K, Vizier Noknogo Upravlenia Po Kursu, Docking Light, Pilot Sight VP-1, Vizier Pilota-1, Laser Rangefinder LPR-1, Laserny Dalnomer-1 Kurs Rendezvous System Docking System, Sistema Stykovka IV Nutranego Parahoda, SSVP Teleoperator control mode, teleoperator ni resim upravlenia, toru Entry actuators system, sistema ispoinatelnik organov spuska, COS Landing aids kit, complex SREDS TV prizemlenia, KSP Portable survival kit, nozimi avariani zappas, NAS, containing a TP-82 cosmonaut survival pistol or Makarov pistol Soyuz Launch Escape System, Sistema Avarianogo Spasenia, SAS Variants The Soyuz spacecraft has been the subject of continuous evolution since the early 1960s. Thus several different versions, proposals and projects exist. Specifications Topic <laughs> Soyuz 7K part of the 7K 9K 11K circumlunar complex 1963 Sergey Korolyov initially promoted the Soyuz ABV circumlunar complex 7K 9K 11K concept also known as L1 in which a two man craft Soyuz 7K would rendezvous with other components 9K and 11K in earth orbit to assemble a lunar excursion vehicle the components being delivered by the proven R7 rocket Topic <laughs> first generation The manned Soyuz spacecraft can be classified into design generations. Soyuz 1 through Soyuz 11 (1967–1971) were first-generation vehicles, carrying a crew of up to three without spacesuits, and distinguished from those following by their bent solar panels and their use of the IGLA automatic docking navigation system, which required special radar antennas. This first generation encompassed the original Soyuz 7K OK and the Soyuz 7K OKS for docking with the Salyut 1 space station. The probe and drogue docking system permitted internal transfer of cosmonauts from the Soyuz to the station. The Soyuz 7K L1 was designed to launch a crew from the Earth to circle the Moon, and was the primary hope for a Soviet circumlunar flight. It had several test flights in the Zond program from 1967 to 1970 Zond 4 to Zond 8, which produced multiple failures in the 7KL-1's re-entry systems. The remaining 7KL-1s were scrapped. The Soyuz 7KL-3 was designed and developed in parallel to the Soyuz 7KL-1, but was also scrapped. Soyuz 1 was plagued with technical issues, and cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov was killed when the spacecraft crashed during its return to Earth. This was the first in-flight fatality in the history of spaceflight. The next manned version of the Soyuz was the Soyuz 7K Oaks. It was designed for space station flights and had a docking port that allowed internal transfer between spacecraft. The Soyuz 7K Oaks had two manned flights, both in 1971. Soyuz 11, the second flight, depressurized upon re-entry, killing its three-man crew. Topic. Second generation The second generation, called Soyuz Ferry or Soyuz 7KT, comprised Soyuz 12 through Soyuz 40 It was developed out of the military Soyuz concepts studied in previous years and was capable of carrying two cosmonauts with Sokol space suits after the Soyuz 11 accident. 
Several models were planned, but none actually flew in space. These versions were named Soyuz P, Soyuz PPK, Soyuz R, Soyuz 7 KV, and Soyuz OIS Orbital Research Station. The Soyuz 7 KT, A9 version was used for the flights to the military Almaz space station. Soyuz 7 KTM was the spacecraft used in the Apollo-Soyuz test project in 1975, which saw the first and only docking of a Soyuz spacecraft with an Apollo Command – Service Module. It was also flown in 1976 for the Earth Science Mission, Soyuz 22. Soyuz 7 KTM served as a technological bridge to the third generation. Topic: <laughs> Third generation. The third generation Soyuz T, T, Russian Transportnij translate. Transportny, lit. Transport spacecraft 1976 to 1986 featured solar panels allowing longer missions, a revised IGLA rendezvous system and new translation attitude thruster system on the service module. It could carry a crew of 3, now wearing spacesuits. Topic: 4th generation. Topic: Soyuz TM 1986 to 2003. The Soyuz TM crew transports M Russian lit. Modified were fourth-generation Soyuz spacecraft, and were used from 1986 to 2003 for ferry flights to Mir and the International Space Station. Topic. Soyuz TMA 2003 to 2012. Soyuz TMA, a Russian translate. lit. Anthropometric features several changes to accommodate requirements requested by NASA in order to service the International Space Station, including more latitude in the height and weight of the crew and improved parachute systems. It is also the first expendable vehicle to feature glass cockpit technology. Soyuz TMA looks identical to a Soyuz TM spacecraft on the outside, but interior differences allow it to accommodate taller occupants with new adjustable crew couches. Topic: Soyuz TMAM 2010 to 2016. The Soyuz TMAM was an upgrade of the baseline Soyuz TMA, using a new computer, digital interior displays, updated docking equipment, and the vehicle's total mass was reduced by 70 kilograms. The new version debuted on the 7th of October 2010 with the launch of TMA-01M, carrying the ISS Expedition 25 crew. The Soyuz TMA-08M mission set a new record for the fastest manned docking with a space station. The mission used a new six-hour rendezvous, faster than the previous Soyuz launches, which had, since 1986, taken two days. Topic: Soyuz MS since 2016. Soyuz MS is the final planned upgrade of the Soyuz spacecraft. Its maiden flight was in July 2016 with mission MS-01. Major changes include More efficient solar panels Modified docking and attitude control engine positions for redundancy during docking and de-orbit burns New Kurznya approach and docking system which weighs half as much and consumes a third of the power of previous system New TSVM-101 computer, about one-eighth the weight 8.3 kg versus 70 kg and much smaller than the previous Argon-16 computer Unified Digital Command – Telemetry System MBITS to relay telemetry via satellite, and control spacecraft when out of sight of ground stations, also provides the crew with position data when out of ground tracking range GLONASS, GPS and COSPAS SARSAT satellite systems for more accurate location during search rescue operations after landing the Soyuz MS02 spacecraft had its maiden flight on October 19, 2016 to launch Expedition 49 to 50 from Baikonur with 3 crew members. Topic: <laughs> Related craft 
The unmanned Progress spacecraft were derived from Soyuz and are used for servicing space stations. While not being direct derivatives of Soyuz, the Chinese Shenzhou spacecraft uses Soyuz TM technology sold in 1984 and the Indian orbital vehicle follow the same general layout as that pioneered by Soyuz. Image gallery See also See list of Soviet manned space missions and list of Russian manned space missions, as well as the Zond program. Space Shuttle Orbiter, American equivalent from 1981 to 2011 Dragon 2, future American commercial human spaceflight system Zarya spacecraft Shenzhou spacecraft Crew Space Transportation System, study to develop a European-Russian successor to Soyuz Sokol Space Suit Orbital Technologies Commercial Space Station Voskhod Spacecraft Globus Imp Navigation Instrument <laughs>